Hi everyone, my capstone project covers a hallucinogen bromo dragonfly, more specifically its physiological effects. I was fascinated by the name of the drug, which actually comes from its molecular structure, and the fact that I had never heard of it before. Given that the majority of information we have on it is related to its effects on the body, and case reports of hospitalizations and deaths from overdose, it seemed natural to focus on the physiological effects of the drug. Throughout the rest of the video, you'll hear me refer to Bromo Dragonfly as BDF. This is a common name for the drug, along with Stanfly and Placid. BDF is actually quite similar to LSD, especially in that it's a sympathomimetic drug, and it's usually taken orally in the form of blotter paper. Two of the best sources for my paper were Bromo Dragonfly by Capola Mondola and Designer Drugs on the Internet by Karatsa and colleagues. So you'll hear me refer to them often, and if you want to read more about BDF, these should cover most of what you need to know. Also, please excuse me if I mispronounce any of the author's name. First, we should cover the origin of the drug. According to Coppola and Mondola, it was synthesized by Matthew Parker in 1998 at Purdue University in my home state of Indiana. His original goal was to use the compound to study the serotonin receptors in the central nervous system, and Coppola and Mondola, Karatsa and colleagues, and Andreessen and colleagues have all mentioned its strong action as an agonist, as the serotonin receptors of 5-HT2A, 5-HT2B, and 5-HT2C. You may recall that in our book, My Socalizio and Connors explain that action at the 5-HT2A receptor is thought to be important in creating visual hallucinations. Coppola and Mondola, as well as Gasseau, also say that BDF is an agonist at the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor, which I'll go into more detail about later. BDF is mostly abused for its positive, euphoric, psychological effects. Much more problematic is its long list of detrimental physiological effects. Coppola and Mondola say that it can cause headaches, diarrhea, sweating, high heart rate, fever, respiratory problems, seizures, and liver and kidney failure. They also mention that it can cause rhabdomyolysis, which according to the Institute for Quality and Efficiency in Healthcare, is a condition where muscle tissue breaks down, enters the blood, and can cause paralysis and kidney damage and or failure. Kratza and colleagues add that the drug can cause nausea and vomiting, lung collapse, convulsions, tremors, muscle tension, pupil dilation, heart murmurs and arrhythmias, and gastrointestinal problems. Two of my sources, Gasso and Homan, Micus, and Zock, went into more detail about BDF's action as an alpha-1 agonist, saying that it can increase blood pressure, causing limb ischemia and coronary vasospasms. To clarify these terms, I reference some other sources. The National Cancer Institute explains ischemia as lack of blood flow to the limbs, and Wang says that coronary vasospasms are spasms of the coronary artery. These issues can cause heart attack, organ failure, and gangrene. In fact, Kratza and colleagues describe the case of a patient who overdosed on BDF and lost fingers and toes due to ischemia and eventually died after a series of convulsions, respiratory problems, and liver and kidney failure. Unfortunately, in my research, I came across an image of a similar case that showed the horrifying results of BDF-caused tissue necrosis, or tissue death, and the amputations that followed. Case reports detail the other frightening side effects of the drug. The case report by Andreasen and colleagues describes a young woman who died of BDF overdose due to swelling of the lungs and brain and possible kidney failure. Wood and colleagues describe another young man who had to be hospitalized for seizures, agitation, and hallucinations. Even more terrifying for users is that, according to Karatsa and colleagues, the drug's effects can last one to three days, making it an extremely long-acting drug. So you can see how harmful BDF can be. In my research, I was struck by the fact that even though BDF is extremely dangerous, and it's been almost 20 years since its synthesis, we still have very little information on the drug. I used almost every article on BDF I could find, and that ended up being 10 articles. Given how easy it is to obtain on the internet, the fact that many countries still haven't explicitly banned it, including the United States, and it's relatively affordable at $14 to $42, all of which Cross and colleagues go into more detail about in their paper, it's alarming that more research hasn't been dedicated to the drug. In fact, I think this is the most important thing I learned, and one that I want to emphasize to others. There's simply not enough research on this drug. One article I read by Kay Stogner and Miller pointed out that BDF may never reach high popularity because its longer drug action isn't feasible in today's society, particularly because we're constantly connected through things like social media. 
still, they can see that although it may not be popular now, there's no guarantee that it won't rise in popularity in the future. They mentioned that with this lack of information, medical staff are unprepared to deal with BDF-related hospitalizations. Even if the drug never reaches full popularity, there should be some research that informs doctors and nurses on how to deal with the BDF cases that do occasionally occur. Otherwise, people will continue to suffer horrible deaths from a drug that sounds innocent, but is far from harmless. Thank you.